All right, welcome to today's Tech Talk. So this is one of our lectures um, about timely technology topics that we do here on Facebook Live. Um, we also do a set of programs called Appy Hour where we talk about apps. Um, so all of those Facebook Live videos are available through Facebook, of course, and you can also check them out on the library's YouTube channel as well. So after this class is done, or this video is done today, it will be available on Facebook. It'll also be available on YouTube. Um, you can check out our back catalog as well. So if you know someone who might be interested in this topic, but they couldn't make it um, onto Facebook today, you can absolutely send them the link, give them the information that it'll be on Facebook, and it will also be on YouTube. So my name is Anne. I'm a technology trainer with Heights Libraries. And as we go along today, you can put any questions or comments that you have in the actual comment box on this particular live video. Um, I should be able to see them and try and answer them, either typing them out or um, responding live during this Facebook Live event. But today we are taking a look at cutting the cord, um, which admittedly is a little bit of a misnomer um, because there's one very important cord <laughs> that you do need to keep around. But we'll give folks maybe a minute or two to join us today. We are here every other week. Um, my coworker Jackie and I have been alternating, um, but it'll be me for the next couple of next couple of weeks probably. Um, so definitely keep coming back to the library's Facebook page um, to see what we have scheduled for our Facebook Live events. All right, so it looks like we can go ahead and dive in. So this is cutting the cord. As I mentioned, it is one of our tech talks, which is a kind of a lecture on a timely technology topic. My name is Anne, and I'm a technology trainer with Heights Libraries. And there is one thing that we want to clear up from the very, very beginning of cutting the cord is a little bit of a misnomer. Cutting the cord means essentially ending your cable subscription in favor of internet-based streaming service options. So things like Netflix or Hulu or internet TV options, things like YouTube TV or Hulu Live TV. Often cost is a pretty, is the largest factor in making that decision because cable TV's gotten really, really expensive. But other people are cutting the cord because they're just more interested in the content that's on these streaming services. There's lots of cool things happening there that's not necessarily happening on network or cable TV. When we do say cut the cord, though, we don't mean everything. If you subscribe or you pay Spectrum, for example, for your internet service and your TV service, you're probably going to have to keep paying them some amount of money because you need your internet connection. You still need an internet service in order to access all of the different options that we're talking about today. So you still have to keep one cord, one internet cord in your life, but there are a lot of benefits to cutting the cord. The first, of course, is potentially a lower cost. As we'll talk about later on um, when we get into some of the actual services, a lot of people subscribe to lots and lots of different streaming services, which means the price can add up pretty quickly. But in most cases, you are going to end up with a bill that is lower than your cable bill. It just might be spread out across multiple different services. There's also a lot more variety out there. Um, you're not just stuck with things that broadcasters are putting on TV. You have a whole back catalog, a whole set of things that you'd be able to watch, older shows, older movies, etc., all available through these streaming services. And a lot of these streaming services have gotten into producing their own content, meaning that they're the ones who actually pay for whatever show or movie um, and a lot of them are winning awards too so there's a lot more variety than you would see in just a standard kind of cable lineup you are also able to watch on your own schedule 
So that means that you are able to start and stop things whenever you would like. You can pause things in the middle. You don't have to worry about commercial breaks or anything like that. You get to choose when you watch things. It could be in the middle of the night. It could be in the middle of the day. That's up to you. Like I kind of mentioned, often these services have no or very limited commercials, depending on the plan that you're using. Um, but you can, you don't have to deal with commercials with this particular setup. I've gone many, many years at this point without seeing many commercials because I use these streaming services primarily for entertainment. These are also portable too, so if you are traveling, if you don't have access to the TV because someone else is watching something, you are able to watch it on a mobile device, on a laptop, anywhere you have an internet connection, you're able to access this type of content. And it's also flexible. You can cancel at any time. There are no contracts, like with cable. You don't have to argue with anyone in the billing department to cancel something. So you can choose to subscribe to Netflix, for example, for a couple of months, watch what you want to watch there, and then cancel at any time. It's completely flexible. We are looking at kind of an average price um, of about $10 a month per video streaming service. And I'll talk about what video streaming or what I mean when I say video streaming um, on my next slide. Or we're looking at about $55 a month and that price keeps increasing if you're trying to replace the cable TV experience with a, with a streaming TV or internet-based TV option. That'll make more sense once we actually define that though. So when I talk about video streaming, instead of purchasing something on DVD or Blu-ray or electronically through Amazon or through iTunes, um, or you know coming to the library and picking up just one copy of something, video streaming services allow you to pay for access to a wide catalog of TV, movies, documentaries, etc. The service it, or the shows and movies, the content is going to vary from service to service. So if something is on Netflix, it's probably not going to be on any other streaming service. It's kind of exclusive to Netflix. That's why lots of people will subscribe to lots and lots of different services to be able to kind of pick and choose um, across all of those different options. It's also worth noting that the shows that are available on a streaming service right now aren't necessarily always going to be available. Um, there was a big discussion when Peacock, which is Netflix, or not Netflix, um, NBC's new streaming service came around. They were um, going to be the exclusive home of The Office, for example. Previously, The Office had been on Netflix. So shows will move from streaming service to streaming service or disappear off of streaming services sometimes. It just depends on all sorts of agreements behind the scenes between production companies. So there are lots of articles often saying what's leaving or what's being added to these streaming services. So it is not static. It's going to change over time. And also a lot of these streaming services, like I mentioned earlier, have their own exclusive content. There are things that Netflix paid for. They actually put the money into the production. Therefore, no other streaming services is ever going to get access to it. And it may not even ever get produced on DVD as well. So you might have to subscribe to Netflix or Hulu or Paramount Plus or any of those to actually see that content. TV streaming services, on the other hand, are basically replicating the cable TV watching experience, complete with channel listings. You're able to you know, watch your favorite shows at 7 p.m. on Thursdays with, in real time with the commercials built in, um, but they are often more expensive, and it depends on how you actually consume content, how you actually watch things. So there are a couple of questions that I've come up with that help you decide which option is best for you. So are you okay with watching movies that have you know, come out in the past or past seasons of TV shows? Are you trying to catch up with all the stuff that has come out? Or do you prefer channel surfing? You like having the TV on in the background. You like being able to switch from channel to channel. You don't 
necessarily need to pick one individual show to watch, you just want it in the background. Then you would want TV streaming versus video streaming. If you're okay waiting for new content, new seasons of shows, for example, to be added, video streaming might be the best option for you. On the other hand, if you don't like spoilers, if you want to watch shows as soon as they air, then you probably want a TV streaming option. So you can sit down in front of the TV when it airs and watch it right then. If you're interested in streaming exclusives, things that only exist on Netflix or Hulu or any of those other options, you're going to have to go with a video streaming service. There's no other way to watch those. They don't air on NBC or any of the cable networks. It's only on Netflix. On the other hand, if you like live sports and local news, that often will force you in the direction of TV streaming. I've got a couple options we'll talk about at the end um, that will give you access to more local content or potentially sports content, um, but that's definitely more on the TV streaming side. So if you do have any questions as we go along, you can put them in the comments. Um, I don't have a moderator today, but I am keeping an eye on them. So I will try and answer any questions that come up. So we're gonna start off with our video streaming options. So like I mentioned, a lot of uh, families, households, friend groups, etc., will subscribe to multiple streaming services and share the costs. Um, so they will, one person will pay for Netflix and allow people access to their Netflix account. Um, you can create separate profiles within an individual Netflix account. So for example, on our Netflix account, I think we have four different profiles. So I can keep track of the shows that interest me and where I am in a particular series versus my boyfriend can have his own series and his parents are able to keep things divided too. You also are then able to share your costs as well, so dividing up all of these different streaming services across various people too. So this is back in the heyday of Blockbuster essentially because video streaming services are kind of similar to that where you were, are able to open up Netflix, open up any of these streaming services and pick from a wide variety of options. So some of the big names, and you've probably heard of them before, um, include Netflix. Um, Netflix starts at about $9 a month. That's for a pretty limited plan. It doesn't include commercials, um, but they are one of the big names in streaming. They've got a lot of content and they're paying for a lot of things too. They're producing a lot of things that are exclusive to them. Hulu is another option. Hulu's a little bit unique in that their starting price is much lower. They start at $6 a month. Um, it does include commercials at that price point, um, but you are able to pay more. I think it's closer to $12 to get rid of commercials entirely. Um, Hulu also sometimes has shows right after they air. Um, so things that air on Fox often or FX, they're available the next day on Hulu. So you don't necessarily need a TV streaming service then. You can wait a day, avoid all the spoilers, and watch it on Hulu. Prime Video is another option. Um, Prime Video is part of Amazon Prime. So if you are already an Amazon Prime member, you have that included in your membership. Um, otherwise, you can pay for it separately. It's about $9 a month. There are no commercials with that. And they have, again, a lot of exclusive content um, that's been winning a lot of awards as well. HBO Max gives you access to all sorts of HBO content. Then it's also going to be Warner Brothers content too. So things like 
Friends or Doctor Who. Um, all of that is available through HBO Max. It's a little bit pricier. It starts at $15 a month. There, is, there are rumors of a cheaper tier coming out, but they haven't announced that officially. It's looking like it's probably going to start at about $9 or $10, um, potentially with commercials or with some limits on what you can watch. Um, HBO has been kind of talked about a lot um, because a lot of movies have been premiering since they haven't been premiering in movie theaters or they're showing up concurrently. Um, they premiere in the movie theater and they're available to watch on HBO Max at the same time. Paramount Plus is the replacement for CBS All Access, which was one of the early kind of network streaming services. Um, it does give you access to CBS content, so things like the new um, Star Trek series. It's only available on Paramount+. Plus. It's the only place you can watch it. Um, it also gives you content from Nickelodeon, MTV, BET, Comedy Central, the Smithsonian Channel, and some live sports and news, actually, as well. That starts at $5 a month um, with a commercial-based plan, but you can pay more um, in order to cut out the commercials. Peacock, which I kind of mentioned, is from NBC. Um, so they have a lot of NBC shows, things like The Office and Parks and Rec are available there. They have kind of an interesting model in that it is free with some caveats. So there is a free version of Peacock. You do have ads included in that and it's kind of limited in what you can watch. Not everything is available to free users. You can upgrade to a premium membership um, which is five dollars a month um, which still has commercials but you do get access to older shows things that aren't currently airing and there is a final upgrade to a ten dollar plan where it cuts out commercials entirely. Disney Plus is another big one that premiered not that long ago. I think it's just over a year that Disney Plus has been around, but it's a very popular service. Um, starting at $8, or, or it's at $8 a month. There's kind of just one plan with that. That includes all the Disney content. Um, so every Disney movie you want to watch, it's going to be on there. Um, Star Wars and also Marvel. Um, so there was a lot of discussion with The Mandalorian and um, WandaVision and things like that. Those are exclusive to Disney+. Plus. Apple TV Plus is a little bit unique in that it is only exclusive content. It is only content that is paid for by Apple TV+. Plus. It is only available there. There's nothing that's you know previously aired on a different network or used to be available on Netflix. It's all original to them. That starts at, or that is $5 a month. Um, but it does include things that are pretty well regarded, things like Ted Lasso, um, which has gotten a lot of good buzz, is available through Apple TV Plus, and it's the only place you can watch it. And finally, we are also seeing things, um, channels that are creating their own streaming services, so cable channels that are actually producing their own streaming service. BET Plus is one example that starts at $10 a month, and provides access to all sorts of content, often exclusive things, things that don't actually air on BET, but are available through that service. Um, so we are seeing the streaming service market kind of fracture in that now, it used to be you got Netflix and Hulu and you were good, now it's kind of splintering out. So if you want NBC content, you used to be able to watch The Good Place on Netflix, now you have to watch it on, or you used to be able to watch Parks and Rec on Netflix, now you have to watch it on Peacock. So that's another streaming service to add to the mix. Now as far as TV streaming options, there are a wide variety available and it really depends what the best one for you really depends on what you watch. Um, they each have a different channel lineup. Um, so you would need to do individual research based off the channels that you actually watch. But these are a few of the big names in TV streaming. So Sling TV is one of the older options. It's been around for a long time. Um, well, 
relatively, in terms of streaming services. It starts at $35 a month um, with kind of some limits on channels. Um, they unfortunately, actually most of these options at this point do not have sports, local sports streaming. Um, it was kind, there used to be, you know, the Cavs and the Indians you could watch through these TV streaming services, but not anymore. There are all sorts of, again, stuff behind the scenes. Um, so they are limited. You can't necessarily watch your local news through Sling TV. YouTube TV is another option, which is separate from just regular YouTube. It's owned by Google. It's kind of under that YouTube umbrella, but it is a separate service. You have to pay for it. That starts at $65 a month. It does include local channels, so you can watch, you know, Channel 3 and get the local Cleveland Channel 3, for example. Um, but they don't currently have sports either. They do have an exclusive partnership with PBS, um, so if you want to be able to watch PBS through a TV streaming off TV streaming service, this is probably the best option for you. Although I do again have alternatives for PBS. Hulu is back again because they also have their own live TV service. If you subscribe to that at $65 a month, um, you do get access to the Hulu video streaming catalog too. So it's kind of a two for one. Um, you pay for the TV and you get the, the video streaming included. That also has local channels. Don't remember if they have sports or not anymore. They might be the one that does. AT&T TV um, starts at $70 a month, also should have local channels. That's gone through a lot of iterations. It used to be Direct TV Now, then it was AT&T TV Now, now it's changed to just AT&T TV. Um, so they've gone through a lot of versions. Um, but if, for example, AT&T is your service provider, you might want to go with that option. Philo is another option. It does not include any sports channels, so no ESPN, nothing like that, which means that it's actually the cheapest option. It starts at $20 a month. Um, doesn't have local channels, but you can get a lot of channels that you might be interested in with Philo. And finally, Fubo TV is $65 a month. Um, Lots of channels, over 100 plus. It does tend to be a little bit more sports focused. So if you are interested in that, um, you can definitely check up there, check out their lineup. But with all of these, I would go through and look for the channels that you watch. So if you watch HGTV, if you watch Comedy Central, if you watch ESPN, make sure that the service that you are choosing has those channels, or at least the vast majority of the channels that you watch now. That's going to be the deciding factor. Now, one of the big questions that we get is, how do I actually get these streaming services onto my TV? Because it's easy enough to go to Netflix.com on a computer and pull up Netflix and start watching. but Computer screens are kind of small. Smartphone screens are even smaller, even though there are apps that make it really easy to access these services. So we need a way to connect our TV essentially to the internet. And there are a number of different ways that we can do that. One way is to connect a computer, often a laptop, directly to the TV. Typically, this is used, or uh, we use an HDMI cord to do that. So, this particular slide is a picture of an HDMI cord. You may have some of these around the house. They're often what um, connects you know, projectors to TVs or computer towers to monitors. Um, so, you may be able to do this with stuff you just have around the house. The HDMI cord works pretty well, but it doesn't have a specialized interface that makes it easy to navigate on your TV. It basically takes your computer screen and blows it up to the sides of your TV, which can make it kind of tough to navigate sometimes. And it also means that you can't be on your computer at the same time 
if you're not like me and you actually pay attention to things, that's probably okay. But it does require a separate device being connected to your TV. Another option is, and I have to update this because this is old last gen game consoles at this point. If you have game consoles already in your house, I'm not saying you need to go try and get a PS5 because good luck. Um, but if you already have game consoles at home, they are able to connect to streaming services. You are able to go in and choose Netflix, log into your Netflix account, and be able to watch it through your TV using the gaming console as your kind of hub, as your internet connection. So that typically um, will work if you already have those. Another option, especially if you're in the market for a new TV, is a smart TV. So these TVs do connect to the internet. Um, they typically connect to your Wi-Fi network. And they kind of function like your smartphone or tablet, where there are apps that you're able to add um, to the TV that then you're, you can log in. You do have to subscribe separately to this particular service. So just because it says Hulu on the screen for this particular example doesn't mean you automatically have a Hulu subscription. You have to subscribe, log in with your username and password. And then you can just choose the Hulu app on your TV and it'll open up and it's ready to play. One thing that we are running into with smart TVs is they don't always get updates. Um, so there have been a couple generations of smart TVs that no longer work with the streaming services that were built into them just because the, the app no longer is up to date enough to run the actual content. So keep that in mind, they may not have as long of a lifespan as TVs that you might have had in the past. Then we take a look at streaming boxes. So these are devices that plug into your existing TV. It's essentially a way to make your dumb TV smart. Um, so they will connect to the internet for you and then connect to the TV so you're able to view things on the screen. Roku is one example, it's a prominent example. Um, starts at about $30 for one of these devices, goes all the way up to $100. Um, but that's probably a better price than replacing every TV in your house. If you can just get a $30 little stick to plug in, that makes life easier. Um, Roku is I used to say Roku worked with all streaming options, but they seem to be in a fight with YouTube right now, um, or with Google. So they do have the ability, all of these streaming boxes do have the ability to remove streaming service or remove access to streaming services from their device at any time. Um, Roku used to be the most open, now they're in this fight with Google. So. I don't know what to tell you. Generally, Roku is is the most open, gives you access to the most things. Um, and for the rest of them, it's often best to match company with company. So this is the Amazon TV stick, um, Amazon Fire TV stick. Um, starts at about $40 and goes up from there. This does have a remote where you can talk to Alexa, essentially. You can talk to the remote and have it you know, pull up whatever show you, you actually ask for. This is definitely going to be best for Amazon Prime Video. Other options do exist on the Amazon Fire TV options, um, but Amazon and Google generally don't get along. It's taken them a long time to kind of accept their, the competitor's services. Um, so if you watch a lot of Amazon, this might be the best option for you. Google also has its own streaming box, streaming dongle thing you plug into your TV called the Google Chromecast. Um, so this starts at $35, so we're kind of in that same price range. Um, this does have the option for voice control again with Google Assistant. 
Um, it's going to work really, really well with Google products, things like YouTube TV or just YouTube in general. Um, you can also stream directly from your devices, so from your phone, from your tablet, from your computer. You're able to take something that maybe isn't a mainstream streaming service, or maybe it's your vacation pictures, and actually project it, kind of beam it to your TV so other people are able to see it as well. And finally, we have the Apple TV, which again is going to work best with Apple TV Plus since we're matching company with company. The issue with Apple TV is it's pricey. It starts at $150 um, and goes up to about $200. It does have a remote um, that you can talk to Siri through. Um, and you can like play games through the Apple TV as well. You can download content that you may have purchased through iTunes and store it on the Apple TV. So it's generally for folks who are really, really invested in the Apple kind of ecosystem. You have a lot of Apple products, you use them a lot, or folks who just want that easy kind of Apple experience, but it is pricey. Now, if you just want local channels, you just want the local network channels, you want PBS, you don't care about cable or anything like that, um, those local broadcast channels are available for free over the air and can be picked up by an antenna. So you may still have an antenna on your house. That may work. You might need a digital converter though. There are also antennas that are designed to be indoors. Um, you don't have to climb up to the attic or climb onto your roof to install them. They start at maybe $20, $30. You can pick them up at Walmart or Target or any electronics place and can be placed inside the house. Um, we watched most of the 2016 NBA Finals with an antenna like this around the corner from my from our TV propped on the dog's crate because um, that was the right direction to get the signal um, from that particular channel. So it can be a good option, a cheap option to cut the cord, get rid of cable, and if you really just watch those network stations, it's going to be a pretty cheap option. It's just that upfront investment of 20, 30 bucks, and then you don't have to pay from there. There are a couple of options, a couple of websites out there that you can go to to see. You can type in your address and see what channels would be available in your location and what direction those signals are coming from. So you have an idea of how to orient the antenna. Those are tvfool.com and antennaweb.org. They can be tricky to place. Over the air antennas are tricky to place. And if you are surrounded by trees, if you are in you know, a little valley, if you have a brick home, which is really common in this area, you may not get the best signal. And there's nothing you can really do about it other than move. And that seems a little extreme. So it can work, certainly, but it may not be a perfect solution for folks. Another interesting thing that's actually new to my presentation, if you have watched the previous version of this that's been on Facebook Live or you came to our in-person classes back when that was a thing, um, there is now a internet-based streaming service for local channels in Cleveland. It's through Lowcast, which is available at lowcast.org. It recently launched and offers 70 over-the-air channels streaming for free over the internet. So the same things that you would get through an antenna, you can access on your computer with Lowcast. Um, this is only available in certain regions, so Cleveland just happens to be one of those places. Um, it does include things like WKYC, WEWS, um, Fox, CBS, PBS stations, all available through Lowcast. You do have to have an email address in order to sign up to actually be able to view stuff. And it is technically free, um, but anything you watch will include ads in encouraging you to make a monthly donation to Lowcast in order to keep this going. If you pay $5 a month or more, 
those ads are no longer going to show up. So $5 a month, local channels streaming on your computer. You can decide if that works for you. Now there are also some free alternatives, um, so free streaming services that have some content, not necessarily the same quantity of content that you would see on Netflix or Hulu or anywhere else, but if you're looking for free options or you're looking for something that's not on Netflix, there's a chance that it might be available elsewhere. So Crackle is going to include Sony movies, it's owned by Sony, um, so things produced by Sony in terms of movies, TV shows, some original content. Um, it's available online and you can also download apps on smart devices or add it to your streaming boxes, so things like a Roku or a Amazon Fire Stick. IMB, IMDB TV is... Um, IMDB stands for Internet Movie Database. It's a huge database of every actor like ever. I use it a lot when it's like, oh, I remember that one person. What were they in? Or trying to identify voice actors. But they have a streaming service um, that you can watch content right from IMDB. It'll say watch now for free. Um, it's available online through apps on smart devices. IMDB is owned by Amazon, therefore it's only going to be available on Amazon Fire TVs. So you can't watch it on Roku or any of the other options. Pluto TV um, actually has live streaming channels. Um, so like the channel listing you're used to seeing on cable. So if you want to be able to still channel surf without you know, paying money, especially paying for the TV streaming services, Pluto TV is something to check out. They have like a Star Trek channel where you can watch random episodes of Star Trek if you want to do that. That's available online through their, through their website, through an app, or through any of those streaming boxes too. Roku channel is, shockingly enough, available through Roku. It's also available online and through the app. Um, and they do have some live channels, so things like ABC News are available um, through Roku channel. They also have, if you heard of Quibli, which was a failed streaming service that was only available on, mo on mobile devices, uh, Roku has acquired all of their content. Um, so that's available. And there's also a rotating selection of movies and some TV shows too. And Tubi is our last free option, um, which includes movies and TV shows from Paramount, Lionsgate, MGM, and more. Also available online through the app or through streaming boxes. So you can definitely check those out as alternatives if you want to get started with streaming, see what's out there, but don't necessarily want to pay for things like Netflix or Hulu or any of those. Finally, it's time for my shameless plug for library services. You knew it was coming. So your library card also gives you access to a wide variety of content, um, including Canopy, which has a ton of movies. Um, including the Criterion Collection, documentaries. Um, with your library card, you can check out 10 movies, watch 10 different movies um, through Canopy. Um, so you can view it through your browser. You're also able to view it through apps or through those streaming boxes too, things like Roku or Chromecast. You can watch Canopy as well. Um, the rest of these options, actually, we are still figuring out. So it used to be that we could access things like Acorn and IndieFlix and Stingray Kello through RB Digital. Currently, that's a little bit in flux. RB Digital is now part of Overdrive, which you may know for the ebooks and audiobooks that you can check out um, through the Libby app or the Overdrive app. IndieFlix and Stingray Kello are definitely going to be available through. Overdrive, we're still working out if Acorn is going to be available. 
So stay tuned. I may have another happy hour or another tech talk where we talk more about the digital collections that'll be available. And not on this slide, but also an option is Hoopla, which is a streaming service specifically for libraries. It lets you check out audiobooks, movies, music, comics, ebooks, and TV shows. Kind of similar to Canopy, you are limited to 10 checkouts per month, um, and each TV show episode counts as one of those checkouts, but they do have a lot of content from Acorn, so a lot of British TV um, series, which you might be able to get to, get through with 10 checkouts. Um, also things from PBS, things that aired on Masterpiece Theater, things like that are available through Hoopla. So those are all of the different options we're talking about today with cutting the cord. So there are paid options, of course, things like Netflix and Hulu that you can check out. Most of these also do have a free trial. Um, so you could sign up for Netflix. I think it's a week free trial. Um, you'd be able to watch whatever you want and decide if you want to cancel or if you want to keep paying them for that service. You also do have the option to get individual channels um, or be able to kind of watch the same things you're used to on TV with the TV streaming services. And then we've also got some free options, um, both through the library and just in general. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments. I'll try and answer them. Um, this will be available on Facebook once we finish up today and it will also be posted to the library's YouTube channel um, probably tomorrow or in the next couple of days. So you can definitely check that out. Don't see any questions at the moment. So we'll hang out for a little bit longer. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today for Cutting the Cord. You can check it out on Facebook or on YouTube probably in the next couple of days and check out the other things that we've talked about in the past. Um, last week I talked about outdoor apps um, in Appy Hour. So if you're starting to want to get outside now that the weather's um, getting a little bit better, then you can check out that as well. So thanks for joining us, and we'll hope to see you on Facebook Live in the future. Bye.